Beauty and the Beast. It's one of my favorites. So everybody said okay. We decided that I would play Beauty, and Cindy Lou and Susan would play my sister, and Jonathan would play our father. But I've never been in a play before, said Jonathan. How will I know what to do? Just pretend, I said. That's what putting on a play is all about. But there was only one problem. We didn't have anybody to play the part of the beast. And right then, who do you think came knocking on our clubhouse door? You guessed it, my little brother. Cricket, said my little brother. Can I join your club yet? And when I opened the door and said, sure, come on in, was my little brother surprised or what? And when we told him what part he got to play in our show, my little brother said, Grr, growl, I'll make a great beast. So we rehearsed really hard for about two whole days. And then we were ready. Everybody's moms and dads came to our clubhouse. And this is the show we put on. Once upon a time, there was a farmer who had three daughters. One day, when he was coming home from town, the farmer got a little tired. So he stopped and rested under an apple tree, and he picked one of the apples. Then all of a sudden, a scary-looking beast jumped out from behind the tree. Grr, growl, said the beast to the farmer. You didn't ask me if you could pick one of my apples. Now you must stay here forever. Oh, please, Mr. Beast, said the farmer. I only picked an apple because my daughter, Beauty, asked me to bring her one. In that case, said the beast, you must go home and send Beauty back here to stay forever. So the farmer went home and told his daughters what had happened. And the first daughter said, I will go and stay with the beast forever. And then the second daughter said, I will go and stay with the beast forever. And then Beauty said, no. I will go and stay with the beast forever. After all, I'm the one who asked him for the apple. Then everybody cried, and Beauty went off to the beast's house. But as soon as she got there, Beauty went right up to the beast and said, Listen, Mr. Beast, I don't think it was very nice to make me come here. All my father did was take one little apple. It wasn't really because of the apple, said the beast. I just wanted someone to play with. Then how about this, Mr. Beast, said Beauty. Why don't you come and live at our house? That way, you always have someone to play with. What a wonderful idea, said the Beast. And he went home with Beauty. And that was the end of our play. But picture this. My little brother kept on going, grr, growl. Don't I make a great beast, said my little brother. You sure do, I said. <laughs> but I still like you anyway. Remember that song I sang about the clubhouse? Well, I'm going to sing it again. Only this time, I want you to join in on the most important part. When I sing, let's hear it for the clubhouse, you say, hip, hip, hooray. Do you think you can do that? Good. Here goes. Meet me at the clubhouse, down at Cricket's Clubhouse. Meet me at the clubhouse, right away. We'll be singing and laughing. Anything can happen. Let's hear it for the clubhouse. Now you. Ah, uh, you can do it louder than that. Come on. Let's hear it for the clubhouse. One more time. Let's hear it for the clubhouse. Hip, hip, hooray. This meeting of Cricket's Clubhouse is now adjourned. I'll be talking.